get scared, huh? Cephas, touchdown! By the dawn. And you got what? Nine and eight. That's not crazy. Swift on Pro Bowl this year. Lock it in. Zone touchdown to Troy Blind. Eight flowers for a third round pick? No. You're tripping. The gut punches will stop. Yo, what's happening? It's your boy Rad out here in Rip City, Portland, Oregon. Repping them Detroit Lions, us versus everybody. And we back at it again. I got the guy, Young Simba. What it do, Dose? What's happening? What's going on, Rad? What's going on, man? Nice little video here. Mix it up a little bit. You're going to be talking about some offensive coordinators. I feel like that that's the that's what's popular right now. That's what's popping. Who's going to be sure. the next OC for the Lions? So we're going to dive into it, give you some names. Brad, I know you got some good names over there. Some names that people aren't even thinking of, right? Maybe. Maybe. I got a couple. I only got a couple, you know what I'm saying? I don't I don't think it need to be a long list. Let's keep it simple. Nice, short, and sweet. I don't think Brad Holmes and Campbell need to overcomplicate this thing. They just need to listen to us. Mm. That's it. Talk about some in-house options, too. We're going to bring up some in-house options. And, of course, guys that are not here right now that maybe the Lions go after. We got connections, things like that. Rad, you, you want to start it off with your first name? And I don't think this is any order, right? Is yours in any order? No, nah, I don't that? have no, like, one, two, three. Like, nah. Okay. It's 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 no order. Uh, I'm going to start off with Frank Smith. He's the offensive line coach for the L.A. Superchargers and the run game coordinator. 2010 to 2014, he was the... Uh, New Orleans Saints offensive assistant offensive line coach, which during that span, it was actually a nice little fun fact. The Saints ranked third fewest sacks allowed. In that span, they pushed off multiple pro bowlers and they had an all pro offensive lineman. Then in 2015 to 2017, he was the Bears tight end coach. 2018 to 2020, he was the Raiders offensive line coach. And he actually took Darren Waller to another level. I think TJ Hawkinson needs to be pushed to another level, and maybe he can tap in on that. Last year, the Chargers did have a high-powered offense. I believe they were ranked fifth in points and fourth in yards per game. Rushing attack, they were averaging 4.3 yards a carry, which that's cool with me because you hand the ball off three times. That's a first down at that point. But primarily, we do know like the Chargers was a passing team. They had Herbert and things like that. I think he would just be a great candidate because – He's got a track record working with offensive lines. He's the run game coordinator out there right now. And at this point, what we lost was pretty much, how we would say, like our run game. He was, you no, know, Anthony Lynn was our run game coordinator. Because right now, uh, is it Ben Johnson? Yeah, it's Ben Johnson. That's he's what handling, we believe. He's been handling, like, the passing scheme and thing like that. That's, that's one of my candidates right there, Frank Smith. Offensive line, run game coordinator for the L.A. Super Duper Chargers. So they ran the ball better this year than they did last year that's what you're saying yes in-house option i think we should start with the in-house option first and then we'll get to some of these outside names rad let's start with that man ben johnson mm -hmm. piggyback off of what you said i want to get your thoughts on this one too ben johnson takes over as our offensive coordinator so this year i mean he's been a tight end coach all year they retained him dan campbell kept him around and they gave some guys opportunities like that same thing in the front office is with Dan Campbell before, so there's already that connection. Working with the tight ends. Really started to hear his name when Anthony Lynn was no longer the play caller. And I think Dan Campbell brought it up in one of his one of his pressers. With Ben Johnson, Dan Campbell did say that he was much more heavily involved in the passing game. And a lot of guys gave him credit for the creativity, including Amon Ross St. Brown, Jared Goff, who said the sky is the limit with Ben Johnson. It was to play against the Vikings that he was, I think, first praised is when he decided to kind of add that little motion, you know, the little motion. And of course, they also pulled the lineman there to really sell the play extra fake. And Goff couldn't get back fast enough to let that pass out of his hands. And it was a great play design to hit Brock right. And our play design seemed to get much better as Goff, whoever was a quarterback, but mainly Goff was extremely decisive. And I think we saw that as the season went on in the last couple of games, extremely decisive, knew where to go with the football in certain situations. There wasn't hesitation. There was no confusion. It was, I trust my receivers to be where they're supposed to be, and I trust where I'm putting the ball. And we even saw in that last game some passes Goff made that, to be honest, I don't think we saw him make 
much of the entire season. He would immediately roll out whenever he felt a little pressure or to go to the route because he knew where things were going to be. This one really sticks out to me when he rolls right and fires it back over the middle of Tom Kennedy. Love the ball placement. Ball is low, but he knows where to go with the football, where to attack the defense and what's going to be there. That's something that stuck out with the Lions ever since really we heard about Ben Johnson getting more involved after the bye week is that the Lions were attacking the weaknesses in zone coverage and the coverage that we were getting defensively. Our quarterbacks knew where to go with the football. Even in that Tim Boyle interception last play of the game, he had two reads. One side was for zone coverage, the other side was for man coverage. He read it wrong. They were letting it fly. Where in the first half of the season, there was some hesitancy there, for sure. Now, of course, getting guys back helps as well. When you get Taylor Decker back, it's like, okay, we can actually pass protect. Getting a guy like Josh Reynolds helped as well. But there was some creativity there, and I think there was a lot of confidence in our quarterbacks on where to go with the ball. And they credited him for the Denver touchdown uh, that we had, the only touchdown in that game where they had Khalif Raymond do like mm -hmm. little, like, you know, fake motion, return motion. R R R yeah, the whip, yeah. whip around. Yeah, yeah. when they had him do that. So he started getting credit for some of the creativity. And I know personally, I think the pass game took a – we know statistically he took a huge step forward. Mm -hmm. They were setting up defense. I mean, they were attacking defense as much better. They seemed to have beaters for everything. Golf was way more comfortable. Even Boyle mm -hmm. seemed pretty comfortable. And one thing that stuck out to me is when Boyle said that this was the most confident reading the field that he felt in his entire career playing right. football. So Ben Johnson, I think he did a, a real nice job, assuming that he is the guy that's kind of leading that charge because that's what it sounded like. He was with the pass game that he was the guy I know Jared Goff credited him. So for me personally, I'm cool with Ben Johnson returning and being the offensive coordinator next season. The way we were passing the football, I thought we were doing a really nice job, especially when you see the weapons that we had and mm -hmm. getting those guys consistently involved. It was it, you weren't able to take players out of the game for us. Right. What are your thoughts on Ben Johnson? You did a great job. Outstanding. Stellar. Marvelous. Oh, uh, big word. Yeah. Big word alert. The passing scheme. It, people were being schemed open. Golf was just throwing dots. Boy, it was I, I take that back. Golf wasn't throwing dots. He was throwing accurate ducks. <laughs> All right. We'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm just being real. He don't throw hey. dots. I would I would not be mad if they said, hey, our new offensive coordinator is Ben Johnson. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be mad because our offense did we start putting up a lot more points. We looked a little bit more explosive. I'm open to keeping Dan Campbell calm. I mean, it, as long as it's he's cool with it because it worked. And it's like, man, you got to start somewhere. Hire a coordinator. It's likely going to be someone that wasn't a coordinator before. So it's like, you got to start somewhere. And if, if Campbell's rolling and he's good and they can handle the other stuff, let him go. I mean, Aaron Glenn will be going mm -hmm. into year two. I don't know if they're going to continue to have uh, guys like Dom Capers around. But if they can handle the other stuff, special teams, like Dave Fipp did really well this season. We did a lot of trick plays. Yeah. So if you could just focus on that. I mean, it, I thought it worked fine. We'll throw the numbers up of the Lions since the bye week statistically because it did improve big time since Ben Johnson was apparently having a much bigger impact offensively. Right. Brad, you got another guy for us? I do. I mean, we're, we're talking about relationships, see how he, you know, Ben Johnson and Campbell has that relationship. I'm going to go with Zach Robinson. Okay. Mm, okay. <laughs> he's, the, uh, he's the assistant quarterback coach for the LA Rams. He has ties with golf and Brad Holmes. He said he has watched every throw Jared Goff has ever made. He, a little fun fact, he was the Oklahoma State Cowboys quarterback when Des Bryant was there. That's why when I was doing some research and his name rang a bell, like he has played, he's a proven quarterback. He was in the NFL and he was also on the Detroit Lions back in 2010. Don't know if he played any downs, but he was on the roster. Okay. okay. Let's just, yeah. let's yeah. just go with that. No. And you know how I feel about McVay. Like, I feel like he's an offensive mastermind. I, I like their play calling. Their scheme, they get people open. I mean, Cooper Cup dang near broke Megatron's record this year. Stafford does have something to do with that also. But, like, it seems like always in L.A., somebody's always open. If we can plug somebody from L.A. who has a good relationship already with golf and homes, I would like to do that. And he's actually mm -hmm. played in the NFL before. He doesn't have a huge coaching history. I just like that he's a former player. He played at a high, good level in college. And he already has a strong relationship. Zach Robinson assistant quarterback coach for the LA Rams. That's that's one of my candidates. Was this his first job as a as a coach in the National Football League? Yeah, it was it was just with the Rams back in uh 2019. Okay. He's just been an assistant quarterback coach, then uh he was an assistant receiver coach and now he's back to being an assistant quarterback coach. And did you say he worked with PFF? He did he actually he did, he did work with PFF for a little bit. Okay. You're right. Okay, there you go. People that like right. PFF, you probably like this guy then. If you don't he like did. PFF, he then, actually you know? he was the the lead quarterback something for PFF, I was reading. 
That's, right. that's pretty cool though. That is cool. I like that. Maybe he hey, maybe he can get in there and tweak some of our PFF scores up a little bit. Cause some of them are pretty whack. I'm just gonna be honest. Anyway, let's let's move on, man. I got a good one. And Brad loves this <laughs> stack, guy the, too. Stack so. the books a little bit. <laughs> yeah, stack it a little bit in our favor. I heard Brad I heard you say I don't love you don't love this guy. Chill out. Brad's Who? hatred goes with the age here. I don't know. It just feels kind of it feels kind of messed up, but let's talk about him a little bit. Mr. John Benton. Okay. Too like old. He's too old. too old. Too old. Mm. Like, 30 to 40 year old, but go ahead. He's old. He's old, but he's got results. That's one thing that I always look for. If a guy's got results, man, especially when you've coached for a long time, sometimes it, things just don't work out like this Anthony Lynn situation. But I don't want a guy that just was good one time and now he just keeps getting higher, but he's never successful where he goes. But like about this guy, he's been successful. So John Benton, he played very little bit. He was the under at the free agent for the Saints. He actually played at Colorado State in college. Okay, so there you go. Long coaching background. He's coached a lot of places. At Colorado, he's old. Rams, Texas, he's old. Because he's old. He's been to a lot of different places. He's seen a lot of different things, man. They are. Old. But 52 is not, I don't know. Anyway, he might be 58. Now that I'm now that I'm thinking about it, he, yeah, I think, he's, I he's think you told me he was like getting closer to 60. You just tried to sugarcoat to make him a little I younger forgot. than what he is. He, we don't want no old years. heads in the building. Nah, man, we're trying to be a young, youthful team. All our players is young. They need to be able to connect with them on a personal level, too. You know what I'm saying? We don't need no old heads around there. Go ahead, though. Todd Walsh, right? He's 53. Here's the thing. He's been an offensive line coach pretty much everywhere he's been. He's been an offensive line coach, an assistant offensive line coach. But when you look at, like, what has he done? Plus, he was also a recruiting coordinator. So there's there's part of a coordinating job. Most recently, he was a run game coordinator okay. with the San Francisco 49ers, which can be that stepping stone into becoming an offensive coordinator. And this would be an out of pop house option, of course. But he also has that connection with Dan Campbell going back to 2015 when Campbell took over as the interim head coach. He was the offensive line coach there. Now he left the next year as well as Dan Campbell. So I don't know exactly what the relationship was, but as I said, he's got results. I'll throw the stats on the screen right now. You can see it. He's worked with a lot of offensive lines and you can see the improvement that his offensive lines has made every single year. With San Francisco, we know how great that run game was when they took him to a Super Bowl. And the improvements that they had every year, because when he came in there, it was not a very good offensive line. But most okay. recently with the Jets stands out, man. The Jets, terrible offensive line. They had rookie Makai Becton, who was their best offensive lineman at left tackle. Then in 2021, Makai Becton barely plays that season, and their offensive line improves as a whole. They got another rookie, Vera Tucker, playing left guard. They got young tackles stepping up. You can see the numbers. They ran the ball much better. They just didn't run a ton probably because they were trailing all the time because they were the Jets. They were bad this season. But as Rad brought up, he went with Salah. He went over there and, uh, you know, just stayed with the guys that he had connections with back from his time with San Francisco. But he's got experience. He's got numbers. He's had success. He's been to a Super Bowl. He just hasn't been an offensive coordinator. I look at him as not maybe the play caller, but maybe an offensive coordinator that can continue to bring that run game presence. He also is a big wide zone scheme uh, rushing coordinator or rushing coach, mm -hmm. which I think fits us a little bit. I think it fits us what we do, but I'm sure he's got a variety with all different things that he's been a part of. So I think keeping that guy in there with a Ben Johnson that can still help you with the pass attack, losing Anthony Lynn, who was known for his run game, I think you can kind of replace some of that, get a guy that's done a great job with an offensive line. Our offensive line's good, but it could be better. we got a lot of young players right. there. So mm -hmm. the more you can help, the better. And plus our depth. Hey, well, you know what? That's that's for another another day. Red, that's my second candidate. Red, who you got for your third candidate? My third and final candidate. He's 34 years old. Young. Young gunner. Mm -hmm. Mike Kafka. Now, coaching bio isn't very long. He's just been with Kansas City. Soaking up that Ed, uh, Andy Reid and Benemy knowledge. Season, he is the quarterback's coach and passing game coordinator. Now, all these people I'm naming, I want to keep in mind that I still want Dan Campbell to call the plays. Now, they're just coming in, helping out, scheming for pass game. And then also, if you can help, you know, get tricky with the run game and things like that. So, mm -hmm. his bio, like I said, right now, he's a quarterback coach, passing game coordinator. 2018-2019, he was the quarterback's coach. And this is all with the Kansas City Chiefs. And then 2017, he was just the offensive quality control coach. So the, the coaching history isn't deep. It isn't, you know, that long. But he's been under a good NFL team, a mastermind, Andy Reid. And then he's been an NFL player. He was on multiple teams as a practice squad quarterback. And so I, I like that. I, I want ex-NFL players. Let's keep that trend going, that you've been in the trenches and you know what to look for. And then I also want somebody young who has that young mind. 
I don't want nobody old school, things like that. Like, nah, man, the game is changing. You still need to be creative with certain things on as far as like passing and run uh, run play calling. I did want to add a little bit more to what Rad is saying here after doing some research on Mike Kafka. An interesting candidate because Mike Kafka, if he waits another year, he'd probably have a better shot at becoming the head coach if Eric Bieniemy gets a job this offseason. That's what it would have to come down to is Eric Bieniemy getting a job as a head coach somewhere this offseason. And then he would probably slide into the offensive coordinator role this year. And that would likely lead towards a better opportunity to become a head coach for him in 2023 if they have another successful year offensively. However, if he does leave this season and he wants to become an offensive coordinator or, of course, a head coach, he's been tied into that as well. It's a short background. It's very interesting because it's really he's really been the guy that's overlooked kind of the Patrick Mahomes growth. I mean, the first season that he started was 2018, and Mike Kafka was brought in in 2018 from Northwestern. Now, the reason that he was brought into Kansas City is because he had ties to Andy Reid back when he played for Andy Reid. All right, now, he didn't really play much, but he played for Andy Reid. So they brought him in, and he's kind of been the guy like the quarterbacks coach and now the passing game coordinator overlooking this Patrick Mahomes from start to where he is now obviously he had a ridiculous 2018 you know jump onto the scene season but since then he's been pretty darn solid I mean Andy Reid's been there since 2013 and before that it was Alex Smith and Alex Smith he was playing well like no question he was playing well but he wasn't playing at this level and he's been credited a lot for being innovative being very innovative offensively so it's definitely an interesting candidate I mean you really never know because he's not calling play Place and Andy Reid is the guy there but at the same time he has overlooked kind of this growth of Patrick Mahomes as his quarterback coach and they well they've had some success you could see a trend most everybody I've named was a passing coordinator it has something to do with the passing game or they're coming from a, a off they're they're coming from working under a offensive minded head coach in McVay Andy Reid and now Frank Smith, he's with the Chargers, but I just, I like his background. i throw another name in here. This is another run game background type of offensive coordinator candidate, but there's a couple things that I do like about this. First thing that I really like is that when you see coaches that have come from this tree, I guess you could call it, they've been pretty successful, whether that's being a head coach or an offensive coordinator. So that's the first thing that sticks out. He's also got a pretty similar background to a Deuce Staley. He's just been in a lot of different places. He is a young coach as well. This is Thomas Brown. Okay, we I know we got another LA Rams guy here. Brown is a former running back for the Georgia Bulldogs. He spent very little bit of amount of time in the NFL for the Atlanta Falcons for the Cleveland Browns. He was a sixth round pick, but then he got right back into coaching. He started off as a strength and conditioning coach with the Georgia Bulldogs, and you can see the list of places that he's been. He's been a running back coach at a lot of different spots. Chattanooga, Marshall, Wisconsin, Georgia. Then Miami, Florida brought him in, and it was the coach that coached him back at Georgia, running back coach, but they also then promoted him to being the offensive coordinator. Now, that offensive coordinator role, he was not calling plays. However, he was in charge of the run game, all right? So that was like a, a big step up. So he does have some experience doing that so this may not be a play caller then he went to South Carolina for a year to be a running back coach and most recently he spent in the NFL with the LA Rams now actually today the Miami Dolphins set up an interview with Thomas Brown that's the first team I've seen do that so I was like oh okay snap all right this guy's not that far under the radar I thought he was when I found him but anyways let's take a look at some of the numbers here so you can see what McVay said about him on the top he's a stud definitely an OC or a head coach and the reason I bring that up because like I said guys that have been with McVay that have left have found some success you look at Matt LaFleur with the Green Bay Packers what he's doing as a head coach Zach Taylor what he's doing as a head coach with Cincinnati or even a guy like Greg Olson the offensive coordinator for the Las Vegas Raiders as I said I think he has a pretty similar resume to a guy like Deuce Staley but if you want to go you know out of house and bring someone in I could see this maybe being an option a young coach I guess he reminds a lot of players of a Mike Tomlin I know he has a really good connection and relationship with players in the past he did well with recruiting when he was helping recruit back in college he was able to land some top recruits I think for Miami they brought in a five star a four star really he helped improve a lot of run games that he was with see the statistics they improved the Marshall running game the Wisconsin running game and he kind of worked his way up Chattanooga first kind of worked his way up bigger schools then he got that opportunity as the offensive coordinator and you could see the numbers there how the run game improved every single year as a whole there was actually some people saying that man he just got to convince the coach 
to let them run the ball more because that is their strength of the team. But there's a little bit of context within this that sticks out to me. 24th nationally rushing the ball over 205 yards per game. And that season with Wisconsin, with the Badgers, he coached up Melvin Gordon, who had a ridiculous season. I mean, the numbers that Melvin Gordon put up were insane. He put up over 2,500 yards rushing, and he had 32 touchdowns. We know Wisconsin, they're about running the football. And even the backup, Corey Clement, who's another NFL player, he had almost another 1,000 yards. And when he went to Georgia, he worked with Sony Michelle, who put up over 1,000 yards, which I think is part of the reason that maybe the LA Rams brought him back. McVay said he was interested in him years ago. Maybe that's part of the reason, though, because there is that connection between Sony Michelle working with him back at college and now working again with him in the NFL. And this year, Sony Michelle, I mean, look, the Rams haven't ran the ball extremely well this year. Now, they also haven't had Cam Akers, which has been a big loss. So Daryl Henderson, who's had a better season, he's improved upon 2020. And Sony Michelle. Now, 2020, Sony Michelle and a limited amount of carries was awesome. But Sony Michelle isn't having a bad season this year either. I really want to look at those Miami years because he was coaching Mark Walton in his first year, which was a very promising sophomore that he had. He had a great season, 5.3 yards to carry, over 1,100 yards rushing, uh, 14 touchdowns that season. It was actually the first bowl win since 2006. But then 2017 came around, and after that, they were expecting that to be the strength of the team. So Walton, Mark Walton, was back, and he got out to a ridiculously hot start. I mean, the guy had 7.3 yards per carry. 428 yards in four games. Some efficiency there, all right? He had an outstanding start to the season, but he went down with an ankle injury, missed the rest of the season. And this is what kind of reminds me a little bit of Deuce Staley because he did a great job with this as well when they had to go to their depth with Philadelphia. They were able to keep the run game afloat. And that's what he did with Miami. It's Travis Homer who stepped up and he became the guy. And he ran for six yards a carry in 2017 with over 900 yards rushing. So he had a good season. He actually finished as an all ACC second team player. And he missed the first five games. He didn't miss the first five games, but he was a backup for the first four games of the season until his fifth game. Now working with the LA Rams, you can see statistics at the bottom. They haven't ran the ball extremely well this season. He reminds them of a Mike Tomlin, and he does have a good connection, good relationship with his players, young coach. I think the big thing here is, though, that he has that run game background, not necessarily the pass game background. So that's something to keep in mind. Don't know if he'd be a play caller then with us because he's never been a play caller before. Of course, that would be his step up into that next job. And look, I like Deuce Staley, but if we're looking out, uh, out of house options, that's done some good things, known for the run game. Well, this this could be an option for the Lions. I know it's another Rams guy, but I really like the background. I guess there would be a little bit of a connection with Jared Goff because him being there in 2020 was the last year for Goff, and I know that season was ugly in the way that it ended, but he, he was there, so he would he would under, he would know the quarterback. And he can come over here and get the Lions to the playoffs because that's where we're headed next year. So if you want to be mm. part of something that's about to, you know, blow up and boom, you come join the Lions, Legion of Doom. Oh. Well, that was okay. I mean, I'm, I don't know. I mean, you might have stole something there, but I'm, I definitely did, but I don't care. Me talk you, to we'll, me. We'll, we'll talk about Deuce in a second. But I did want to quickly just touch on a few other names that, that I took a look at today. A couple of things that I liked about him. First okay. of all, Scotty Montgomery. I liked a few things about this guy. A few things. All right. So he's been a receiver coach. He also has played in the National Football League. So to your point, you want guys okay. that have played. I like that. So he's been a receiver coach. He's also been a head coach with East Carolina for three years, but it didn't go well. He was 3-9 every year, and he got fired. Their scoring went down. So that wasn't very good. But he has had some success, again, with the run game coaching, most recently with the Indianapolis Colts this past year, where their run game exploded. Now, they didn't make the playoffs. So people said they didn't run the ball enough. But that's not his mm. fault. He's just a running backs coach. And we know Jonathan Taylor had a crazy season. He's probably in the MVP race. And they really average 5.5 yards of carry, which is just nuts this year. And then before that with Maryland, they had some success running the ball as well. Now, the concern there is that they ran the ball well before he got there. And they had Anthony McFarland, who was better before he got there. But they did run the ball pretty well. And during that time, which was before he joined Indianapolis, he was an offensive coordinator. He's done a pretty good job with the run game, even though he's a former receiver. I think what really popped everything off for him was being with Duke because that was a very successful stint. It led to him being hired by ECU. The run game improved. He also had some success working with some of those quarterbacks. He became the quarterback coach in 2014. He had a lot of responsibilities with Duke, you know, offensive coordinator. Then he became the quarterback coach. He was doing, he was doing a lot with them, the associate head coach. He had a lot going on with Duke. But when he took over as the quarterback coach, he did see improvement in Boone. And then also Cirque as a first-year starter, he had a pretty solid season. The run game improved. That was a successful stint, and that led to him getting the job, even though when they fired their coach at East Carolina, people were not happy about it. So the expectations were high. He goes to East Carolina. It doesn't go well. Doesn't win a lot of games. He has his moments. They started off 2-0 one year, and then they lost 9 
their last 10. Head coach didn't go super well, right? And we're not looking for him to be our head coach, which is a good thing. With Maryland, they also parted ways with him as well. So I wouldn't say that it was a success. There were spots that looked good. Uh, Tualia, it was his first year. His first year, which was his last year at Maryland, was working with Tualia. And he had a not a bad year. I mean, look, there was only five games played that year, so that's why his numbers are so low. But in the five games, it wasn't bad. It was the most successful quarterback that they the play that they had in the last few years. The whole, they averaged over 400 yards per game. So their offense clicked more. The run game didn't have the same production, but you just kind of have to adapt and adjust. They parted ways with him, lands with the Colts, and the Colts probably saw what he's done working with the run game in the past, and they're like, hey, let's give him a shot. He's young. Let's see what he can do. He's a little bit over 40 years old. Let's give him a shot. And with Jonathan Taylor, he went crazy this year. Of course, having a good O-line helps a ton. And then also having Naheem Hines, who had a better season as well. So there's a couple things that are good on this, some things that aren't great. The experience is nice to know that he's been in OC multiple times. He's been in that position, so he'd understand that he would be able to call plays. You know, you'd be able to give him that role. He's worked with quarterbacks before. He's worked with the run game, and he's a former receiver. So he's kind of dabbled in a lot of different areas. Maybe not one of my favorites. Pep Hamilton. I got to bring up Pep Hamilton, man. Got to. Okay, this guy was working in the XFL. Right? What do you know about Pep Hamilton, man? I know nothing about Pep Hamilton. His name's cool. He does have a cool name. So you guys may know if you watch the XFL, he was the coach for the defenders, and I guess he was also the GM. It just didn't last that long. He had Cardale Jones, which you already know that was going to be an L as soon as he took over. But he also had a man, Tyree Jackson. Y'all remember Tyree Jackson? He actually had more success than Cardale Jones did. But they went three and two with terrible quarterback play. Uh, but Pep Hamilton, he's been around, man. He's been at a lot of different places. Go back to Stanford. I think Pep Hamilton kind of fits the style that the Lions play utilized right now like with Stanford he was there with Andrew Luck when Luck had those great seasons and he came out as who they said was the best quarterback prospect ever when you look at the numbers sticks out with Pep Hamilton is the work that he's done with the quarterback position specifically I think this all really kicked off with Andrew Luck when he got the offensive coordinator job at Stanford starting off as a wide receiver coach and look Andrew Luck was already already had a great season the year before with Jim Harbaugh but then the next year coach David Shaw takes over and you have Pep Hamilton becoming the offensive coordinator. A little bit of an even better season with Andrew Luck. And then the next year, uh, Andrew Luck was no longer there. So he was working with Kevin Hogan. After that, then he moved to the Indianapolis Colts to work with Andrew Luck once again. This time as the offensive coordinator. And he was working with Chuck Pagano, Pagano at the time. And I, I would say it started off pretty darn well. You know, the first season he was there working with Andrew Luck. He had a good season. 23 touchdowns, 9 interceptions. In the second year, 40 touchdowns, 16 interceptions. But then he moved on to two 2015 and in 2015 things didn't go extremely well they were three and five he was fired eight games into the season some people thought that it was kind of a, a scapegoat for Chuck Pagano in 2015 to the Cleveland Browns to be their assistant head coach and quarterbacks coach and things were kind of a mess at that time for Cleveland I mean the year before he got there it was Johnny Manziel and it was Josh McCown running the show 20 touchdowns 12 interceptions they also had Austin Davis playing in two games that year 61 percent completion percentage uh in 84 pass rating the year that he comes in and he takes over as the quarterbacks coach for the Cleveland Browns. Cody Kessler, it's Josh McCown, it's RG3. They win one game that season. The stats were not very good. It's when he goes to Michigan to work as their assistant head coach and their passing game coordinator. This is linked up with Jim Harbaugh, and this was the first year John O'Corn and Peters, the quarterback position wasn't very good. However, he did overlook with Shea Patterson in 2018 when he had 22 touchdowns, the seven interceptions, 65% completion percentage, 149 rating. And after that, things got kind of ugly again, 2019, 2020, as Josh Gaddis became the guy and they hired him and then he became the offensive coordinator. So they moved on from Pep Hamilton. It was until really this past year that they had success success again at the quarterback position of Cade McNamara leading the way. For Michigan, a little bit of time off, goes to work with the D.C. defenders, as we said. Most recently with the L.A. Chargers in 2020. L.A. Chargers in 2020 as a quarterback's coach for rookie Justin Herbert, who was working with Anthony Lynn, so I guess there's sort of a connection. And Justin Herbert had a really good rookie season in 2020. So the next season, he would go to the Houston Texans this past year, and he would work with Davis Mills. And we really saw Davis Mills pick it up towards the end of the season. In his last five games, a 104 pass rating you saw nine touchdowns to two picks he didn't have a bad rookie season overall 16 touchdowns 10 interceptions 88 pass rating wasn't a bad rookie season overall for davis mills as the third round pick so that's more where he most recently was say if you're gonna hire a guy like pep hamilton it's for his background over the years working with quarterbacks he has had a lot of experience as offensive coordinator on and off some of it has went well but it's mainly the quarterback i think that you're looking for right i think we gotta talk about deuce staley a little bit Okay. Deuce Staley has been uh, kind of a hot name 
He was looking to become a coordinator. He joined the Lions. We gave him a higher title. We didn't give him the offense coordinator job, but we gave him a higher title. I think he's our assistant head coach, right? He'll probably be the head head coach at the senior bowl just because of how they have it set up now. So Deuce Staley, quick thoughts on Deuce Staley, Red. What do you got? I I wouldn't be opposed to having Deuce Staley. I mean, ex-NFL running back who was actually had a really good – he had a solid NFL career. Scheming up run plays and helping him with the run game. Yeah, he can do that. The guy did it for – quite a while i'm not mad about this in-house if we keep it in-house i'm cool with it just because the things the changes i've seen towards the end of the season i wasn't mad at mm-hmm. now you brought up a point how do staley wants to call plays though yeah. right yeah, yeah so, so do you see do you see that being an issue this daily really hasn't ever gotten that opportunity to be the head coach or really the offensive coordinator that's gotten to call plays with Philadelphia. He hasn't been able to get that opportunity and now he has joined the Detroit Lions this season as the assistant head coach slash running back coach which was the same title that he had back with the Philadelphia Eagles. We've just given him a little bit more responsibilities when we hired him. Haley is being prepared right now to become a, a head coach at some point. So even though he has the same title he chose the Detroit Lions because of Dan Campbell and because of the coaching staff we had but also because of the responsibilities that he's given now is he's kind of being prepared to be a head coach at some point in the future which is kind of what Dan Campbell had Sean Payton do for him. Campbell said that he was going to keep him abreast with the roster, different moves that they were making, trying to get him in front of the guys as much as he could, you know, looking for red zone reports or third down reports, more responsibilities this year, kind of getting prepared to be a future head coach. And he actually may get more of that opportunity in the senior bowl because, you know, Dan Campbell is going to be playing more of an advisory role. So one of these assistant coaches will probably act as the head coach in that game. And that may be Deuce Staley. So if the Lions maybe want to have a better shot at keeping him around, giving him the offense of coordinator job and likely play calling will probably be your best chance to do that but he doesn't have that experience so if the Lions want experience there then they have to go elsewhere but back with the Philadelphia Eagles he interviewed for the head coaching position right before they hired Doug Peterson he was denied then he interviewed for the head coaching position right before they hired Nick Sirianni so of course he was passed over for Nick Sirianni he also interviewed for the offensive coordinator position back in 2018 but he declined to take the job because he was unable to call plays. All right, so that's what makes this thing interesting with the Lions is that if he was the offensive coordinator, would he just take the offensive coordinator job? Maybe okay with just taking the offensive coordinator job, even if that means not calling plays. And I would be open to giving Deuce Staley that opportunity. He's done a fantastic job with running backs in the past. I thought he did a fine job with our running backs again this season. Of course, our we actually had a run game this year, which was completely different from normal with us. But we saw Craig Reynolds, the success that he had when he came in. Godwin had some success. I wish we would see more of Jermar, but I thought he did really well when he got opportunities. Swift didn't have the great season, but he was kind of on and off with injuries. Jamal, you know, topped over 600 yards for the first time in his careers. His career. So I don't think Deuce did a bad job as the running backs coach for the Lions and this could be his opportunity to become an offense coordinator he's never interviewed for a coordinator or head coaching job I believe outside of Philadelphia so this could be his opportunity to become that guy for the Lions now that that spot is open especially if the Lions are looking for more of a run game guy well he could fill that position for the Lions I just don't know if he'd take the coordinator job Maybe he would because it's an extra thing like, oh, I'm an offensive coordinator and the assistant head coach. Maybe that gives you a better shot, even if that doesn't mean playing call and play. Like maybe this would be the perfect, perfect fit. It's just like, hey, you be the play caller. That's what you've been waiting to have be. And we'll kind of work on this together. So it's just kind of, I guess, where Deuce Staley's head's at. Maybe he's trying right. to become a head coach. Maybe he's cool with being an offensive coordinator. Deuce Staley, he's done a he's done a really nice job with running backs in the past. Miles Sanders, he had success for years with those guys. He's a really good running back coach. He's go with fumbles as well. Apparently not with Godwin, but he's going to not let people <laughs> fumble. That. So, so, I mean, I got no issues with it. I think it's possible that he slides into that role. I just think it'd be weird for him to sign that role without play without play calling, knowing that that's what he wanted with Philly, and that's why he asked out of his deal. I do have an honorable mention I would like to throw in here, and a lot of this just has to do with connections. This is Ronald Curry, who is currently the quarterback coach for the New Orleans Saints. All of this is really connections here. I mean, it's not a huge background of coaching. He was a high school star athlete for basketball, football. He was just seventh round draft pick, and he did have a short, very short stint with the Detroit Lions. He was drafted as a quarterback, but played in the NFL as a receiver. College, Mooresville Christian Academy, he was a head coach, but in the NFL, spent time with the 49ers as an offensive assistant, but mainly with the New Orleans Saints. And that's where the connections come in with guys like Dan Campbell, who is from that same system. So an offensive assistant, which was with Dan Campbell, then he became the wide receiver coach in 2018 through 2020, which again, was with Dan Campbell. Now, Dan Campbell left this past season. He was promoted 
promoted to being the quarterback's coach after they lost Joe Lombardi to the LA Chargers to be their offensive coordinator. And that was a big responsibility. I mean, they were losing Drew Brees to retirement. And you're asking this guy, who was a quarterback, that's why he was able to do it, to step in and be your quarterback's coach after being a receiver coach. Now, as a receiver coach, you can see the stats on the right. Uh, they do get their tight ends involved a ton, which Dan Campbell was the tight ends coach. So Jared Cook and guys like that, Elvin Kamara. So he's working with the receivers, overlooked Michael Thomas, who had some crazy seasons during that time. And then, of course, 2020, when Michael Thomas was dealing with an injury, you could see Sanders stepped up, 61 reception. Emmanuel Sanders became the guy. Um, Callaway, Traquan Smith. So some of the guys just had to step up into bigger roles. But this past year as the quarterback's coach, I wouldn't say it went that bad, considering you're losing a guy like Drew Brees. Jameis Winston, we know he came out and he blew out the, the Packers to start off. Great start. They didn't make the playoffs this year. But 5-2 and two with Jameis Winston. The completion percentage was very low for all these quarterbacks. 14 touchdowns, though. The three picks, a 102 passer rating. You know, this is a guy that threw 30 interceptions, right? And then Trevor Simeon had to step in. He played four games. Didn't win any of those games, but the numbers aren't too bad. The complete percentage is just super low. And then Taysom Hill, who played in five games, won four of those. Numbers passing wise aren't there, but he was more of a running quarterback. So to go with three quarterbacks, different style of quarterbacks, Taysom Hill, Jameis Winston, Trevor Simeon, and still find some success like they did, it does speak a lot to the guy as a coach to go from receiver coach to quarterback coach. He said he's living the dream. He's 42 years old. And just the connections from style, how Dan Campbell would want to play it. With all the connections, this would be a pretty fine fit. The thing is, though, you're not getting a guy that's been a play caller. I mean, he was a head coach in college for Morrisville Christian, Ac Christian Academy. But in the NFL, you're not getting a guy that's been a play caller that has an extensive background, you know, extensive experience. You're getting a guy with connections. So Ronald Curry has to come in here as an honorable mention because of all the connections, but not top of my list. You got an honorable mention or someone that's just like, if, if just got to throw up a crazy name or maybe not even a crazy name. Maybe yeah, I, I mean, I do. I do have an honorable mention. It could be, so okay. it's kind of like a co-offensive coordinator position. So it'd be two people, oh. me and you. I like that. We get in there and scheme and stuff up. Now, what would we, we put on our resume though? Like, what would it, what would it have? We just know a lot about the Lions. We've watched a lot of football. True. I played. I was a starting linebacker in college at the Division One level. <laughs> there you go. You know, you know the Lions through and through. You can name the janitor staff at Ford Field. <laughs> so that's true. We do got a pretty nice. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Together. So it's like we know the game through and through. You hire us, and we're gonna make it do what it do. There's like my that. off the wall. And, and look, I'm serious not, about it. We're not 58 either. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, you want youth. <laughs> I'm serious about it. Like, we can get in there and get no, the call like plays. It. Hey, look, one thing we know about Rad is he'll run the football, man. He will oh, run 100%. The football. And he'll run, he likes to run out of the gun, too. So I feel like huh. that fits best of both worlds for us, man. Okay. And I'm going to hold people accountable. You get them penalties, hey, I'm running you. Yeah. I might run you as soon as the game's over. You might just go to knock out a few stadiums right there at Ford Field. Like, hey. Oh, you cost this game. The fans are still there. Just like, okay, go. No, we're going to wait. We're going to go back into the locker room. We'll let you take your pads <laughs> off. Let the stadium clear out. And we coming back and we're going to run some hundreds or we're going to get on them stadiums. Mm. I can ride with that. That'd be that'd be pretty good. You know, I, I have been watching, you know, some quarterback school recently. So maybe I'm See? up for it. I don't know. We just might be. It could be that quarterback <laughs> whisper. Do you have one, though, Red? Do you have another, like, kind no, of. No, I, I don't have an honorable mention besides us because I'm serious about us. You see the face? I see the face. Serious. <laughs> the way you did that. Hey, no, I like it. I like it. I, I'm looking at my list. I've seen Josh Gaddis' name thrown up because, again, it would be similar. He actually did a good job with Tua, so I'll give him credit for that. And he, he did an okay job, I would say, with Cade. I get it. It's a run game kind of guy. you know. But I, well, I wouldn't even say that. I mean, he's he's been in places where they like to run the football. But he's been the quarterback, you know, guy. He's been working with the quarterbacks. What's your favorite one, though? Your very favorite, if you had to pick My, one. If I had to pick one, I'll go either in-house or I'm probably taking Zach Robinson from the Rams. Zach Robinson? I, I do Zach like Robinson. that. I like the connection. Zach Robinson. It, Sorry, y'all. Oh, it's a good one. I like And he'd be calling plays. No. Campbell's oh. still calling plays. Okay. That's his ideal situation. No, my ideal one would be Ben Johnson. I guess do Staley could be the OC if you want to take the job, but it'd probably be. I mean, I want all these all three guys here. So however it works out, and I'm cool with Dan Campbell just continuing to call plays. So there's our offensive coordinator candidates. Let us know below what you got for offensive coordinator candidates.
and we out.